iOS 18.6.2 patched yet another image passing vulnerability. It was found to be exploited in the wild and when paired with a second bug in WhatsApp, it was used to gain remote code execution on iPhones with zero user interaction required. This is commonly referred to as a zero click exploit. As a cautious iPhone user, you might avoid clicking on suspicious links and this would likely reduce your risk of being compromised by a one click chain. However, for zero click exploits like this one, there isn't really much you can do. The bug lies within an image decoding logic in one of Apple's libraries, and so simply receiving a malicious image through an application like WhatsApp could trigger the vulnerable code path directly. When you receive that message notification and you see the small image thumbnail in the banner, iOS has already performed significant decoding logic in the background to be able to present you that thumbnail on screen. And the vulnerability occurs exactly in this logic. So today we're going to dive deeper into the actual root cause of this specific bug and see how a crafted image could be used to write to out of bounds memory on the heap and eventually lead to remote code execution. Multiple parties have already conducted research into this bug, so be sure to check out the original sources in the description below. We'll start by taking a look at a corrupted sample image capable of triggering this bug from Binary Boy. This image file is for the most part a legitimate image in the DNG format a lossless raw image format created by Adobe. The vulnerability lies within the handling code for this specific image format. Two specific bytes in this image file have been modified. First, the sample per pixel value has been changed from one to two. And second, the number of components has been changed from two to one. These two simple changes are enough to trigger this vulnerability. Next, we're gonna simulate the crash path that the WhatsApp application would have taken and then debug it to figure out exactly what is happening and identify the root cause of the bug. The buggy function is within an Apple shared library named raw camera. This library contains all kinds of different decoding logic and the library itself can of course be used by any application. This means that this bug actually doesn't only affect WhatsApp but rather any application that uses the library. So for our research environment, we can run the vulnerable library code from within a custom app that simulates the code flow that the WhatsApp app would have taken upon receiving an image message. And this makes debugging things a lot easier. We'll take the sample code provided by Quarks Labs that calls into the appropriate library functions and attempts to render the malicious image. We can adapt the code to run on iOS instead of macOS and then run this app on an iPhone on the vulnerable iOS version. Upon launching, you can see that the application does indeed crash when trying to render the malicious image. The exact instruction that we've crashed on here is an STR instruction, attempting to write to out of bounds memory. So what actually happened and how did we get to this crash point? If we look at the backtrace from the debugger, we can see that unfortunately there are no named symbols in this part of Apple's library code. And this makes things quite difficult. Let's take a look at the surrounding code by analyzing it statically in a decompiler of choice. We first need to download the DYLD shared cache for this specific vulnerable iOS version. For those that don't know, the shared cache is where all of Apple's library code is stored. Then we can open this in IDA Pro and extract the interesting library, raw camera, which is the component that houses the buggy DNG decompression logic. Once we have the binary loaded and ready for analysis, we want to start by locating the point of the crash. Since the iPhone is running a live instance of this library, ASLR will be in effect, and therefore we need to subtract the ASLR slide first to calculate the static address equivalent of this instruction. Once we've got that address, we can navigate there in IDA, and we can confirm that we are on the same instruction as shown in our debugger. Now let's switch to the decompiler view, since no one wants to be looking at this much ARM assembly. Unfortunately for us, the decompiler view doesn't actually look that much better. We have over a thousand lines of code in this function with no symbols and no debug strings. Thankfully, Quarks Labs and Dark Navy Security have already published a significant amount of analysis on what is actually happening here. So using their research as guidance, let's analyze this a little bit more deeply. At a high level, this function is responsible for decoding a specific component of a DNG image file. We have a few nested loops here, providing the logic to decode rows of pixels. And within the loops, we have decoding logic being performed on the input data and then stored in an output pixel buffer. The pointer to the output buffer is being continuously updated on each decoding pass so that it always points to the next free spot. So let's walk through the exact flow leading to the crash. By the way, if you appreciate the research effort behind making these technical video breakdowns, leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to help the growth of this channel. We first actually enter the vulnerable parsing function thanks to our sample per pixel value being set to 2. 
this value must be exactly two for us to even enter this function as per the check right here. This already seemed a bit strange to me because as we'll see, the vulnerable function logic handles cases for different amounts of samples per pixel. But maybe I'm just misunderstanding something here due to me personally not being very familiar with the wider context of this code base. So let's continue. Inside the vulnerable function, we then enter a series of nested loops. The outermost loop here is iterating for each row of the image that we're decompressing, and it loops for around 4,000 times, which is the height of our sample image. We then enter the first nested loop to pass each pixel in this current row. And here is where we reach the bug itself. This faulty check here is determining if number of components does not equal two. And this is a bug because the code is assuming at this point that number of components is greater than two presumably because we entered the function based on samples per pixel being two. The code seems to be kind of interchanging these two variables. In one part it is using the sample per pixels value, and as I said, this is the reason we are entering this function in the first place. But then in other parts, they use the number of components value instead, such as the value used in the loop condition counter. This causes some confusion when actually decoding, as we'll see next. This loop iterates up to the value of width times two, because of the way this loop is written, however, we end up iterating for many more times than we should. The counter of this loop increments by the number of components value. And in a legitimate call to this function, and in this code block, that value should be at least three at this point. However, our number of components is actually only one, and that has slipped past the checks in this function. So since our loop counter is incrementing by only one each time, we end up looping for triple the intended amount of times. On each iteration in this inner loop, the decompression logic is performed on a value in the source image data, and then that two byte result is written to the output buffer at the current output buffer index. As previously mentioned, the output buffer pointer is being continuously incremented by two each time to ensure that it always points to the next empty part of the buffer. So due to the small number of components value, we actually begin writing out of bounds as soon as we're in the second pass of the outermost loop. Any data directly following the output buffer on the heap would be at risk of corruption. However, in the case of this sample image, the memory immediately following it was actually just a read-only page, also leading to a crash. The intended flow for this function should have actually taken us to the other passing loop, designed for two components per pixel. This would increment the loop counter by a fixed amount of two each time, perfectly writing the correct amount of output values without ever overflowing. However, because of this subtle mishandled check, we are executing a block that we should never have reached. As I briefly mentioned, this iOS vulnerability was found to have been exploited via a zero-click attack vector. However, it wasn't actually sufficient as zero-click on its own. CVE 2025-55177 is a separate bug, specifically within WhatsApp, that allowed an attacker to trigger the processing of image content from an arbitrary URL on a target's device. So if this WhatsApp bug paired with this DNG memory corruption issue, attackers could deploy an exploit chain with zero user interaction required. Without the WhatsApp bug part, the DNG bug itself could still be used as at least a one-click entry point, if loaded on a web page, for example. As is common with these in-the-wild bugs, we rarely ever see an exploit sample in the public eye, along with the patch details. So we will not discuss the exploitability in this video, other than to note that it is in fact exploitable, according to Apple security notes, to achieve remote code execution on iOS 18 devices. In other news, this month the Google Project Zero team actually published a breakdown of a similar vulnerability, but affecting Android instead. This was another in the wild exploit for a bug in a DNG image parser. This is a very interesting read and covers many complex ideas such as the heap shaping strategy and how the attackers actually use this to corrupt objects in memory and then eventually launch a JOP chain to get remote code execution. Check it out if you're curious about the exploitation of these types of bugs. Hopefully you learned something new in this video. As always, all the reference links will be left down below in the description. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.